I'm Samantha Chian, your host with Spirit and Nevada. This episode is brought to you by the Richard Harris Law Firm, helping families and injured victims throughout Nevada for over 40 years. Hope you enjoy the show. So today I'm going to take you on a road trip. We are going to be going two hours north from Las Vegas to Beatty, Nevada. Now you may have passed through it when you're going to Death Valley, but my job today is to teach you all about it. Fascinated. <laughs> I want to come back here when they have baby days. Hello, little friend. <laughs> baby days. All right, so we made it to Beatty, and the first place I wanted to take you is the Beatty Museum. So we're gonna see what relics they have from the past. Let's go. All right. I love coming to museums, especially this one in Beatty, because they have so many history pieces that gives us clues into what this town used to be. And just a little fun fact for you, mining began in Tonopah, Goldfield, and then Beatty. So I'm going to see if they have some old photos of the town. So let's look around. Come on. What are you looking at, Purdy? A fossil fish. I used to collect rocks as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Because I totally believe it <laughs> with you. This is where the town was named after Mr. Beatty. He lived in a ranch home with his Paiute wife and three children. And this was back in 1904. Times were a lot different back then. 
Oh, and here's a photo of him right here. Check this out. And he opened up his home to people that were passing through to get to Death Valley. He was very kind, and anybody that was going through there, he said, come on in, come in my home. So, what a nice guy. And Beatty just has so much history in the gold mine, and we're gonna be going to Rhyolite after we're done visiting this museum, which is one of the most photographed ghost towns here in Nevada. That was a lot of fun, walking through history at the museum. I'm a girl who loves her history, but now it's time to head to Rhyolite, one of the most famous ghost towns. Let's go. And it's only a six mile drive from here, which isn't too far. All right, Purdy, get in the Jeep, I'm driving. <laughs> so during all of our road trips, I have this thing about telling Purdy all the wonderful fun facts that I learned during my research. And uh, one of the things that um, I was telling him on the way up here, which I'm gonna share with you guys, is, is Rhyolite used to be this booming gold mine town and there were 10,000 people there at one point, which is a lot. That's a lot of people, um, but it was short-lived, right? As quick as it boomed, it died. And so it's nice to see at least that their buildings are still standing, maybe not the entire building, but there's parts of each one of them, which kind of give us a story about, you know, what happened there. And I know that there's a bottle house um, that we're gonna be visiting, um, which I'm excited about, Tom Kelly's bottle house. And, uh, oh, that's right, see? Purdy does listen to me when I'm telling him all these fun facts. Yes, the John S. Cook Bank Building is another place. And I think we're getting closer. manifested because two men found courts over a hill, believing this place would be the next successful mining town. But little did they know that three years later, this town became abandoned, and it's now known as one of the best ghost towns here in Nevada. Fifty thousand bottles make up this three-bedroom home, built by one of the old miners, Tom Kelly. I guess we should start with the piece that started it all. Although, chronologically, the ghost rider over there was the first. Here, turn around, Purdy. Uh, right there. When, when Albert Shukowski was planning to do The Last Supper, it was summer, right? And what he did is he draped uh, plaster-soaked burlap in, or burlap in plaster yeah. Paris, mm -hmm. draped that over the models, posed them and smoothed it and poured more plaster on. And he wanted to know in the heat of the summer, were those guys going to be able to hold the pose long enough? Yeah, because the so conditions he, are so, so hot. So he did that one first as a trial piece, okay? And also a piece of fun. Yeah, it looks nice. He wanted to do the Last Supper in Death Valley but this is how close he got. You couldn't put your private art installation in a national park. So I, I want to know, why did he decide to have a museum outside of like well, Rhyolite? He didn't actually decide to have a museum. Oh. 
how. So uh, how did the sculpture it work? was the thing. He wanted to do the sculpture, and uh, he uh, he had visited Death Valley before. He said the the desert here reminded him of the Holy Land, and so he chose it as a, as a site to put the Last Supper. Hence the biblical fig figures. Right. Yep. They are, as I said, soak burlap and plaster of Paris, drape it. Once it was dry, he covered it with fiberglass. It's a genius idea. Now, when he first did it, his work area was up by the railroad depot in Ryle, where it's paid. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he first installed it up on the side of Bonanza Mountain up there. But it was only there a few months, and it was either pushed over or blown over. Okay. And then he brought it down here. And uh, a friend of his who came from Belgium uh, at the same time bought this piece of property. Okay. And then uh, they invited other artists. He was from Belgium, right? They invited other artists that he knew from Belgium to come and do works here. So, uh, for How instance, cool. Lady, so there's other artists that have their work. Lady there. Desert over there. Uh, Pretty, she's the pink lady right over there yeah, with the blonde lady hair. Lady Desert or the Venus of Nevada. Uh, she's the work of Hugo Heilmann, who is also from Antwerp, Belgium. Uh, he was doing uh, paintings like that at the time, uh, kind of cubistic. He'd actually feed the, the dimensions, the measurements of the model into a computer and then pixelate it. And then uh, up on the pole up there. Right behind you? Yeah, yeah we have Ikora. How, say a, that one more time. Ikora. Ikora. A female counterpart to Icarus, the boy that flew too close to the sun. He said the poles represent the wings. It was a funny thing. I, uh, I interviewed him many years ago before I was really connected with the museum. Uh, but I wrote a magazine article for Nevada Magazine. Cool. And uh, he said he was struck by people sitting for hours at slot machines in Nevada. So he says, I'm going to have her facing the gold mine like, gimme. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite part about Beatty? <sighs> I'm not good at favorites, <laughs> but one of the things I really like about living in Beatty, uh, since I'm a photographer and an artist, uh, I really enjoy being able to go out in the desert in all kinds of places. And some of the really most beautiful, most interesting places are off the highway, away, you know, some of them nobody knows about unless they've been there. That's so true. That's why we like the show so much is because we find these places that people might not know about and they're off the the trails, right? They're just... Yeah, I kind of wonder what's going to happen to some of them there. Some of us are a little nervous because of all the gold exploration going on. That I know, I heard there's still mining going on here. Something might get dug up, <laughs> you know, I mean, destroyed, so... Hope Hopefully not. not. There's really Hopefully not much to not. see inside. Uh, I've got my stuff that was up here at home. There's you have photographs on the wall. Because I, I oh, make, is this the artist right here? Uh, okay, the the one who did the Last Supper yeah. is Albert Shukowski, and this photo that's him there. That's yeah, on the right there. Yeah, that's what I there. thought. I recognized him from my research. Uh huh. Can you look at my new shirt? <laughs> Isn't it cute? It's yeah. ghostly. <laughs> My lame jokes. <laughs> um, can you grab my Wonder Woman backpack? Yeah. Please. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, thank you. Purdy, check this out. My Purdy. Very, my very first job. I like that. Uh, that's cool. I like My very that. first job when I was a junior in high school was in a photo studio in Las Vegas. No way! <laughs> in fact, I, I discovered last year that the State Museum had a collection of my boss's negatives and things. So I never sat down with the archivist so he could go through them. Yeah, these are cool, right? Yeah, he, he, he does a really good job. These are yours? Yeah, yeah. those are his. Really? Yeah, he photographed these. Damn. Look at that, look at, this one. look at the last one. Some of these, well this one, let me see, this one and this one have been covers for Nevada Magazine. Yeah, I've seen yeah. some of these. That's why we saw also some of the stuff we over did. in the Boulder City 
museum, right? Like huh. where they have some of them in the back room where they have some of these. Because huh. I, I saw them like, oh, I love that. These are great. Aren't they? We're at the largest candy store in Nevada. Thank you. And it smells like Subway. Eat fresh. All right, let's see what candies there are. Mmm. Yum. Look at this. Mmm. I want to know what your favorite candy is. Let me know in the comments on Facebook. Oh, nice little net brace. I, I hope you guys like our lion habitat video. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, watch it. Go on Facebook. It's on there. There's aisle and aisle and aisle of yeah. candy. There's so many aisles of candy. I like you just. To yell out for you. Why? What happened? Because there's so many. I, I you couldn't you. find me. I was lost. I, I, had to I was lost that. in the candy shop. No. What do you got? Uh, you were lost. Really? No, what do you got in your hands? Oh, look at for Rick. He's the executive producer of the show and the reason why we started it. So. <laughs> This is awesome. And this he is puts awesome. up with us. <laughs> anyway. He, he puts up with us because we're a handful. <laughs> that is 100% true. <laughs> we are a lot of work. Okay. You got a lion. Oh, we're going to get this for you, Rick. You have a tiger. What are you saying over there? Lion, tiger. Oh my. <laughs> are you the bear? <laughs> yeah, I'm the bear. <laughs> 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 oh wait, there's more. They even have dried fruit here. Why, why is that funny? I just never thought you would come to Beatty and be like, oh my god, the world's biggest candy store. I and actually then. never knew that Beatty had the world's largest candy store. Yeah. And then you come here and you feel very overwhelmed because <laughs> you're like, that's a lot. That is so true. You think you can handle it, but when you come over here, you really can't handle it. It's a lot. <laughs> Dried green beans. Actually, you know what? This is good because we're in a pandemic right now. So you want to get as many foods that you can preserve like this one. It's a good one. You don't look too happy about your, you must have not had to eat vegetables as a kid. No. <laughs> I, I don't want dried fruit. This is what anything. I like. I like peach rings. Mmm, delicious. It's part of the food group, right? Candy? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a 1% actual fruit. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, all this candy, I'm ready for dinner. I want to head over to that Happy Burrow place. I heard they have the most amazing chili. You ready? Yeah. All right. I, I'm starving. I no candy, I guess. No, we're gonna buy candy. Oh. But that's for later because we gotta eat dinner first. Okay. My bad. Okay. I oh. Okay. As a kid, you all had the like the lemon ones or anything like that, where it was like always like you in school you would sell them for like a dollar to kids. Like, he was already trying to make money as a little kid. Yeah. That was when, when I was in school. We had like all the little flavored ones or the salt ones and lime. And you would just like sell them. Isn't that called like Lucas? Isn't that what yeah, isn't Lucas, that? Lucas. Yeah. I had a girl. Even I know. Even I know. Look, you're missing out. All oh, the sour you stuff. The sour <gasps> stuff. Oh, Lucas. I love these sour belts. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm going home with. What is it, rips? Yeah, rips. I love rips, but these will do. These remind me of when I when I would go to the movies when I was a little girl and I'd get these. So good. So good. <laughs> No, I like strawberry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, time to go grab some chili.
my god, I'm so cold. Hmm? I'm so cold. Look at all this. We gotta get the footage of me eating oh, that amazing jelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, this looks delicious. Okay, my love. I'll get you salt and pepper. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm. It's all for me. Just kidding. I'm gonna be sharing with Birdie. But it looks amazing. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, my dear. Okay. Time to dig in. Okay, I'll let you get your beer. Oh, okay. How are you doing, Jenny? Free, man. Try, try your chili. Okay. Right. Try the chili. Okay. Gotta, Which one? Which one? I this get, one? I got one? you the one with no cheese. I know. I can't have cheese. I'm Asian. Asians don't do well with cheese typically. Well, at least this Asian. <laughs> oh, it has a little kick to it. A little spice. Mama happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, the lady that was in here that we filmed is the wife, the uh, wife of the owner. Yep, that's and her. it's her original recipe, which is cool because you know she will shank somebody if anyone took that recipe, and that's why she's an award winner. Because we like winners. That's right. Only hang out with the A team. Wow. <laughs> Time to eat. No, this is really good. This is really good. I am stuffed. That chili was so good. I can see why the Happy Burrow has won so many awards. Well, it's time to head back to Vegas. I'm Samantha Chion, but you can call me Sam with Spirit of Nevada. Brought to you by the Richard Harris Law Firm. See you all next week. Snacking. Till you can be there. We're at the candy store right now. 